am Psychic Cosplay and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to finish and paint Bo-Katan's helmet. I had a lot of requests on the building and making of video for how to paint this and so I thought today I would do a little making of on how to finish and paint this helmet. If you have any questions after watching this video, don't forget to leave a comment down below, like and subscribe, and let's get into making this helmet. The first step in finishing the helmet is sanding down any uneven seams. To do this, I'm going to use my Dremel and lightly go over all the seams on the helmet. Once you have finished sanding, the next step is gap filling those seams. Before we get into gap filling, a quick pro tip, if you haven't made too much of a mess, using a lint roller to clean up your space is a really easy and fast way to pick up any EVA foam dust. Before priming, to clean up the seams and to make them nice and smooth, I am using Quick Seal to fill in any gaps. This is a silicone based caulking material that's usually used as a kitchen caulking or bathroom caulking, but this works really, really well on foam and is really super cheap. This is a water soluble material, which means you can use water to thin it out and thin out the edges. I use foam scraps and my finger to fill in and smooth out any gaps. One thing to note with Quick Seal is that it does shrink as it dries, so I usually use more than one layer to fill in any gaps. On this helmet, I used either two or three layers on all of the seams. Before painting, I primed the helmet with two layers of Hex Flex Clear. This is a clear PVA glue primer that is brush on. You can prime with anything that you want as long as you do prime your helmet before painting. For painting the helmet, I'm using my airbrush to give the whole helmet a base white. This is going to make the paint much more even across the whole helmet. And the front of the helmet is white, so I'm taking particular care to make sure that the paint is nice and even on the front of the helmet. I am using a top-loading master airbrush, model G22, if you're wondering what I'm using or want to get one for yourself. And the compressor that I'm using is also a, a master compressor. If you don't have an airbrush, you can paint this by hand very easily, or you can paint this using spray paint. Either way is totally fine. I am by no means very good with the airbrush. I usually prefer to hand paint, but it worked out really, really well for this helmet. Once all of the white was done, it was time to tape off the front of the helmet. I am going to be using my airbrush to paint the rest of the helmet blue, so I have to tape off the front that I want to remain white. I did this pretty quickly after doing the white paint. I would recommend allowing your paint to dry for longer than I did, and I also didn't do the cleanest job of taping it off, so I had to go back in and do a little bit of cleanup after doing the airbrushing. However, it worked out. It looks great. I'm really happy with both the white and the blue. And also, something to note and to keep in mind, Merc helmets, or Mandalorian helmets, they have a lot of wear and tear on them generally. And the way that they're painted, they have a lot of scuff marks and imperfections. So if your paint job isn't the most perfect on the face of the planet, don't worry about it. Battle damage. Thank you. 
front of the helmet taped off, it's time to paint the rest of the helmet blue. I did this in two layers. The first layer of paint is actually a mixture of blue, black, and white paint. This makes a sort of grayish, darker blue that I used as a base for painting just flat blue on top of. This gives the blue section a bit more dimension and is closer to the color that I wanted for the helmet. So the first layer is this darker blue color and then I went over that darker blue with a single layer of regular blue paint. By the way, the paint that I am using for this helmet is just Createx airbrush paints, white, blue, and black. After I did the airbrushing, I did go in and paint on details and weathering by hand using a variety of black and silver paint. I don't know about you, but removing masking is one of the most satisfying things about painting cosplay or props or armor. So I'm just going to leave all of this lovely detaping footage in for you to enjoy. Masking removed, I started to clean up the paint job, add in the detail painting, and start adding in weathering. To paint all of the details on the front, instead of masking off, I chose to use a pencil to draw on all the details using a reference image, and then paint by hand. You could choose to use a stencil or tape off the parts of the helmet that you're going to paint the details for. I chose to do this using a pencil uh, since it was the easiest way for me to do this fairly quickly. It's a little bit less perfect than if I had taped off or used a stencil. However, like I said earlier, Mandalorian helmets aren't the prettiest thing on the face of the planet. There's a lot of battle damage. There's a lot of imperfections, so if things are a little uneven or a little not perfect, that's totally fine. To finish off the helmet, I added a lot of silver to make the helmet look worn and used. I used just regular silver acrylic paint using a fairly dry brush to basically highlight edges and add in scuff marks. Once you've added in all the weathering that you want, you're done. And that's how to finish and paint Bo-Katan's helmet. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you liked today's video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you have any additional comments, questions, how did I do this? Please leave a comment down below and I'll see you in the next video.